Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm about to break the biggest rule in the book, but only because a subscriber asked me to. His name is Charlie Sultana. I don't know him, but he sounds delicious. And he asked me in a message, when are you gonna do a video about the nut set? And I gather from his message, because you know I've read a few other concern messages in forums recently that people are worried about the nut set in their orchards and I'm going to break the golden rule which is usually in October November don't look up because everyone gets worried about their nut set and you can't really get much idea about what crop you're going to have this early and uh, the traditional wisdom is you're allowed to look up at Christmas time but not before and um you know there's others like nick savage where i said how can you tell when you're going to get a big crop and he laughed and said mate when it drops and um so that's the the most conservative view about how to estimate your crop for the year but um perhaps this year there's a reason why people should be a bit more concerned i mean bear in mind the northern rivers and and the southern east side of queensland is the native area for macadamias and so the species evolved to adapt to the local climate. And what the local climate normally does, well, in August, for example, we were meant to have about 80 mils of rain. We got 200. In September, we were meant to get about 50 to 60 mils of rain. We got 300. So we've already looked at a, a climate just from rainfall alone that was very different to what the macadamia species expects in springtime and these were in the critical flowering period of course and the flowers aren't particularly water resistant because they're not used to that much water and um, people are worried about how much pollination might have occurred they're worried about the bee numbers um, you know with um, certain areas saying that their bee numbers were well down on normal certainly from what i'm seeing at the moment the bee numbers have recovered to normal so i, I don't know maybe there was a timing issue I, i'm not entirely sure but uh, we also had a patch in September where we had some, you know, 30 degree days, which were completely unseasonal, uh, unseasonal for September. You're normally looking at around, you know, 22, 23 degrees Celsius for our um, flowering period. And the feedback seemed to be that, you know, that that heat caused the flowering season to be quite short, uh, as in the flowers opened quickly and then died quickly. So there were less days available for the bees, however many bees there were, to pollinate the nuts. And a lot of people are worried that as a result of the rain's effect on the flowers and the heat's effect on the flowers, we're gonna have a bad year in terms of nut set. Now, I am only one farm owner, but I've, I've asked everyone I've come across, how's your nut set? And um, look, I'm getting different stories from different people. Um, the complaints I'm hearing about the nut set in terms of raising the alarm, first of all, happened with variety 741. Um, I've also heard anecdotes that 246s and 344s are having a terrible year in terms of nut set. Um, on the other hand, I'm hearing that some varieties like 816 um, and A16, the A varieties, are going just fine and that they're having a normal year. I'm actually looking at one of my straggly A16 trees here now, and you can see some basic nut set there. I mean, it's not a complete box of chocolates. There's a lot of bare racemes as well. This was once a flower stalk, got absolutely nothing on it now, and you see plenty of them all over the place, although you do see some nuts. Now, I wouldn't rate that as a great crop load, particularly for A16, you can usually, you can get some quite heavy crops on an A16 tree. They're a fairly small tree, but they, you know, make up sometimes in size, uh, you know, by having a somewhat heavier crop. I wouldn't say there's a heavy crop on my A16s this year. Again, some bare seams, and you can see, if you look closely enough, some nuts on the trees. Now, with the feedback I got, I thought, well, right, well, supposing a you know, 816 is doing good and A16 is doing good, but 246 and 344 and 741 are doing bad. I then went back to the 
um, Department of Primary Industry site and plotted those varieties and said, is there something I can find in common about the varieties I'm being told are doing badly? And in particular, I was looking at the time for flowering, whether they were early flowering or late flowering. And the sad thing is I couldn't see any real correlation between the flowering period and those varieties. Some of them flower early, some of them flower late. Um, and the result, I don't know. I mean, the 246s were supposedly doing badly. They start flowering early, but they can flower for an extended period. And so perhaps they did well. Perhaps they're doing poorly because they're exposed to heat earlier on in the season. But other early flowering varieties are doing well. Here's a 660. It's got some lovely little nuts on. And I don't know, I mean, the 660 is very closely related to the 741. But again, as I walk along my rows of 660s, I'm not exactly seeing a whole box of chocolates in terms of nut set. There is some, but you know, for every couple of nuts, like the ones you see there, there's a bunch of bare racemes as well, which have no nuts on them. So it could well be the 660 is in the same bucket as the 741. Now, as for the 344s, well, they're a bit further up my block. I've had a look at those as I've been mowing and slashing around this particular trip. The nut set on the 344s has admittedly been fairly poor. You don't see any large bunches of nuts coming on. And in fact, you know, having seen most of my orchard now, I'd say that if anything, the A varieties um, and the triple threes, funnily enough, seem to be doing the best out of all my varieties in terms of putting on a crop this year. And um, it does sort of raise a couple of questions in terms of, you know, resilience and hedging your bets and how many varieties of tree should you grow on a macadamia orchard? I personally think that if there's a problem with nut set this year, and there's every reason to be because of the weather conditions we've had, that if there's a problem this year, it probably isn't specifically on early flowering or late flowering varieties, or even how long the flowers normally stay open on the tree, because some are extended flowering periods, some have a brief flowering period. Um, I think it's more to do with individual varieties and their resilience to certain conditions. Um, the 344 really helps underline that for me because in my experience, 344 is a tree that will bear well under ideal conditions, but present it with anything that's a little bit um, out of the ordinary and it has a real sulk on you. It's a real prima donna. Um, the A varieties, on the other hand, while they can be quite fussy, they can go completely counterintuitive in some years and have a good year when other varieties of tree are doing badly. There's only one variety I grow that seems to do well every single year, and that's the triple three. Now you'll need a big screen to see this, but I'm pointing my camera up at a triple three now and there are racemes and racemes worth of nuts uh, all over it. And in fact, I found a couple further down the tree and there you are. That's an example of a pretty robust tree. Um, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a devotee of the triple three, a bit like Trevor Hicks, who um, is still in fact planting them. And the New South Wales DPI has pretty much ignored the triple three. I, I don't think they want people to plant them simply because they're fairly low kernel recovery. But as Trevor says, look, what they lack in kernel recovery, they make up for in sheer volume of crop. They crop like crazy. And um, it's one of the varieties that China's growing. And I've read an academic article from a Chinese university espousing the triple three and saying, look, you know, when you, when you look at overall economics, it's a great nut to grow. And given that China's a fairly challenging climate to grow macadamias in anyway, the fact that they're getting some nuts out of the triple three 
does um, does speak some some volumes. Um, you won't find the triple three listed in the New South Wales DPI Guide to Macadamia Varieties. Uh, if I find Jeremy Bright, I'm going to be asking him why not, because as far as I'm concerned, it really ought to be put in there as an option. What do we do for the rest of macadamia farming generally? Well, you can't turn poor nutset into good nutset, that's for sure. You've got to work with what you've got. Um, I think despite the rule of not looking up, we do have to do some looking up to see what sort of crop we've got on. Here's another A16 here. Definitely got some nutset, but you can see some bare racemes as well. Um, is it worth spraying? Look, probably. You know, if you've got a decent amount of nutset, it's worth protecting. If you're heavily invested in varieties that have done poorly on nutset, then I'm not necessarily saying pull the plug. Uh, and the AMS will never tell you to pull the plug because I think their their interest in terms of you know their their loyalty to the producers uh, to the processors, they'll always tell you to you know grow as many nuts as you possibly can. And uh, they, they're never that great on the cost side of the equation. But I'd just say, make your own judgment. Have a look up in the trees. Might be a good time to buy yourself a little drone and fly your drone up to the tops of the canopies and see what's going on up there if you've got an older orchard. Sounds like four or 500 bucks worth of expenditure that might be both well worth the effort and a bit of fun for you. Uh, I'm not going to do that myself this year, although I'm, you know, I'm going to be tempted one year because I can get some footage that you guys might be very interested in as my subscribers. Anyway, um, I have really more questions than answers for you, despite, you know, Charlie's request and my, my doing my best. Look, all I've been able to do is gather anecdotes from other farmers. Um, and all I can say is if you focus largely on 246, 344, um, 741, possibly 660, it's time to actually get out to your trees, break the rule, have a look and try and get some idea of how much nut set you've got because you need to bear in mind we've had a very unusual spring, very unusual flowering season with a combination of rain and heat that the macadamia species didn't evolve to cope with and um, it's worth having a little bit of a review, see where your season's going. And now guys, over to you. I really would love it if you'd post something up about the nut set on your own farms. Um, for those of you who are farmers, I'd love to hear from the Queenslanders to see how Bundaberg's going because they didn't necessarily get all the extremes of weather that the, uh, the Northern Rivers growing region had. And so it'd be interesting to contrast what's happening in the Northern Rivers with what's happening in uh, in central Queensland. Um, and it will give us some informal idea of what's going on with the crop this year. For me, I'm staying hopeful, but I'm gonna keep looking up. I'm gonna keep breaking that rule and I'm gonna make some decisions about, you know, whether I focus my rehab efforts into short term, as in feeding for this season, or long term, as in feeding for the next season and the one beyond that. Uh, it's a subject to be continued, but in the meantime, really love to hear from you in the comments section below. And a big kudos to Charlie for giving me the idea for this video. I just wish I had more of an answer for you. So let's give him one, guys. I will see you again soon and talk to you then. Bye for now.